right, joining us now is UK solicitor Femi Aino. Good morning. Happy yes, New Year. Yeah. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. Yes. I'm yes, certain you. you remember the Vision 2020. Yes. <laughs> and the 20s have started. And the 20s, yeah, exactly. the 20s have, are have here. started. Yes. Yes. And that, well, Nigerians uh, in 2019 said a lot of things happened. Mm. And, you know, they are believing that 2020 will right those wrongs that they felt uh, um, yes. happened in 2020. I wonder what your aspirations are for, this, uh, for the country this year. Well, uh, the, uh, even let me make an opening statement. Oh, First right. of all, the president needs to know time is running. Mm. And time is not on his side. And apart from time, age is not even on his side. Today we talk about Aulo, or today we talk about uh, Amino Kano, we talk about Gandhi. It's just because of their legacy. And now, it is, you know, it's, it, what is there now is for the president to start thinking as to once the tenure is over, how Nigerians will think about his person. Mm. And this is a, January is a very good opportunity to make changes, as you know. That's why people say, what's your new year yeah, resolution. resolution? It's very important for the president to start thinking about along that line. And time is not on his side, because in the next one and a half years now, friends are going to turn to enemies, colleagues are going to turn into advisory because of the Joseph for 2023. And the level of depravity in this country is very disturbing. And how do we erase that? The president has promised, if you look at his New Year message, that look, uh, 100 million people will be taken out mm. of uh, poverty. poverty. How are you going to achieve mm. that? Are you going to provide work? Work is not even a solution to mm. poverty, because even you are working, you can still be poor. And also, there are a lot of challenges here and there. You know, one of the, um, the discussions just discussed about what is going on in the power sector. Apart from that, the health sector as well. The president even said he's not happy for Nigerians receiving treatment abroad. abroad. Well, that is a very disturbing statement because he himself received treatment abroad. And also, how do we equip our hospitals? You see, there are a lot of basic things government needs to concentrate on. Number one, let's leave the issue of security as well. Let's just take each sector one by one. Mm. Look at the health sector, the brain drain. How do we address that? You spend more years training Nigerian doctors. As soon as they graduate, then they look for opportunity abroad. Mm. Do we need to either we say, look, if we attend any of these public institutions and we train you, you cannot grow abroad until you've served You've worked in Nigeria for two years. And also, the, if you go to some of these hospitals, if you see what happened here, it's very, very appalling. I was at one uh, UCH battle. You see, it's just a disgrace. Dilapidated equipment, lack of facilities. And UCH used to the, be the, 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 with UCH, the peak exactly, in Nigeria. In those days, and even West least, Africa. That something tells you that, look, if you go to hospital, something should tell you you will come back alive. But the contrary is the case. And doctors working like a mafia, those who are working in the public sector are the one who will refer you to a private hospital because they also have an interest. Benefit. That is not good. Then issues about the drugs are not even there. And also, this idea, by the time they buy one equipment, then they call the whole world that we can now treat cancer here. Is that the reality? It's not supposed to be. And apart from that, let us look at what is happening in, in regarding education as well. You have all these public uh, institutions, but the facilities are not there. The teachers, too, they don't even carry out research as they used to do in the past. Mm. And you now have private institutions. And what is going on in some of these private institutions, ask any of the parents who have their children there. It's a lot of money. And this is January. The bread and water month is going to start now. Well, all of the sectors that mm -hmm. you have mentioned, one of the major challenges that you would get uh, or the reactions you get from them, it's the issue of funding. Mm -hmm. And when you look at our budget, you see yeah. what is budgeted for, for all of these sectors. Patient. And yes. one wonders uh, what kind of commitment are we sincere in our commitment to actually ensuring that uh, these uh, sectors are really as functional as they should uh, be? No, 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 I don't think we are. Because at the end of the day, if you don't fight corruption, even the little that is budgeted for, how is it spent? 
That is the question you need to ask yourself. And if the corruption is, is, is underneath, and whereby you know, this money gets to that sector and it's not being utilized properly, this is the problem. And all of us are going to put up for it. And the onus is on government at the same time to make sure you threaten institution and you monitor institution, and also there is the need for a serious shakeup. And apart from all these sectors which we talk about, look at the judiciary, in, uh, mm. for instance, too. The president in the New Year message said, look, I'm going to be committed to the rule of law. You see, he's wanting to talk the talk, and right. he's wanting to work the walk. Walk the walk. <laughs> uh, if we look at the impact of what governments in Nigeria since 1960 until mm. now has done, mm. and the commensurate results right. on the lives of Nigerians. Mm. One would say that the 60s and the 70s were the best times Nigerians have ever had when it comes to impact of governance. Yes. And then for every successive year, there's yes. always the l looking forward to mm. things getting better, but things don't really get better yes. through the 80s, through mm. the 90s, mm. and then the 2000s, and then mm. we're here, mm. starting up a new decade. Even, yeah. would, 2020, mm. what are you seeing that is going to be different when it comes to comparing where we are coming from and mm. where we think we are going? No, the simple issue is this. Are we progressing or retrogressing? That's, That's what you seem to be saying. Yeah. And it's very disturbing. 60 years we soon be here mm. uh, since independence and still we are still talking about poverty. We are talking about alleviating poverty. Even the president promised to take 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. Mm. But the first starting point is to alleviate poverty. And how do you do that? First of all, you give your citizens opportunity. And if you don't give them opportunity, create an avenue whereby they will create opportunity for themselves. Mm. And how can you do that? You can either have a you know, uh, interest-free loan scheme equip uh, training them how to set up in business and what have you and also educating people that look if you go on all this money ratio it just doesn't see it's not a solution to the problem because the money will not come mm. what will come is prosecution mm. and imprisonment <laughs> so you know these are the fundamentals which we need to look at yeah. and the problem with the Nigerian successive government, as you put it, is that, look, they just promise this, promise that, and then they promise more than what they can deliver. The, and now, what is going on is this. One, the president needs to know that this is the 20s have started. Mm. You either need to rejig the economy if to, as part of your ways of elevating poverty. Yeah. And number one, good road is equally important too. And this dichotomy is a federal road, it's a state, state road. road. That doesn't <laughs> even help. Okay. You, you, you understand me? Because if you travel the whole of Nigeria, it's not peculiar to one state. Yeah. The state of our roads has nothing to write terrible, home terrible, about. I must tell and you. also, they need to rejig the the economy and this idea you know we are talking about refineries look in the next few years people are talking about electric uh, cars. cars so and Nigeria is still talking about building refinery mm -hmm. and in the next few years now you just take your car to the filling station you charge it overnight mm -hmm. and then you drive yeah. so you know these are it, whether it's still cons I'm very concerned whether we are even thinking ahead or we are thinking backward and also it's not limited to that the president also promise that is going to respect the rule of law. Yes. All these, you see, these are very, very fundamentals too. If at the end of the day, you want investors to come into your country, and investors have concern that, look, should there be a problem between me and you relating to our business? Mm. We are not going to get justice in a very punctilious yeah. manner. Will they come? That is the fundamental question. So, so um, I will be asking, setting, yes, since we are trying to set an agenda for mm. the government, Come, uh, this 2020 is with, uh, I'll pick it from the point of uh, the rule of law mm -hmm. because we saw what went on last year and there were concerns raised mm -hmm. uh, as to the shrinking civic space and challenges bedeviling the rule of issues of the rule of law. So what would you expect to see on the path of the government now since it has come out to say that we are guided by the rule of law? Yes, the president first of all needs to know that we have a document in this country called constitution. And why do you have constitution? The constitution is the regulate the relationship between me and you as citizen and regulate the relationship between us and the government. And also there is no point talk, paying a lip service to the rule of law 
the rule of law is the bedrock of a democracy. And the only way it can work, if courts take a decision, you must respect that decision. You must give people unrestricted access to justice to challenge the decision of government. They must not come to court and you start harassing them or doing this because otherwise, and also the president or the government needs to know there are shake and balances in our constitution. Mm -hmm. We have parliament. We voted these people in to represent us, to make law, repeal law. Government must not use policy, use executive order to bypass parliament when taking a decision because that's a violation of the shake and balances that is supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. And also our judges need to be well trained. Nigerian judges, I must be sincere, I know you say, Femi, I know this and that because one has been somewhere. Nigerian judges, I can say it to you, they are still working in an anachronistic fashion. It's, the world has gone beyond that, mm. and Nigeria seems to be standing still, and that's not the way to go. All right. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Femi Aino, for your insight into all of this right now. Thank all right. One aspect that was uh, of major concern to m a majority of Nigerians was the aspect of security. Yes. And before the year ended, mm. the president came up after his meeting with security chiefs. He said mm. that there will be a withdrawal of uh, the military from you know some of the volatile areas and concerns were raised because uh, uh, at the end of the day we're trying to ensure a stable society mm. one wonders if that is the way to go in this year and which ways would you want to see uh, issues of security addressed no that, that's not the way to go well, the way to go is number one we need to do what is called a serious assessment of the security situation you just don't wake up and say, I'm going to withdraw soldiers from these volatile areas. Either, first of all, we need to have a report which will tell us that, look, this is no longer necessary here. Even when Americans, um, the president, decided at a point that we're going to take all our soldiers from Afghanistan back to America. But it is said that we are technically that winning the war against well, 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 You see, you have to be very careful so that you don't get carried away with propaganda. Propaganda is an extension of war. And sometimes, you see, if you look at the military in the last few weeks, what they will tell you is that we managed to neutralize 300 uh, Boko Haram week, two weeks after. The next news item will be Boko Haram invaded another village. And it begs the question that these uh, Boko Haram fighters, are they just a tree that keep growing? Because if you count the number even since Jonathan era, the number of Boko Haram fighters in which the military said they've been able to kill or neutralize, if you add, add the figures, then you'll be concerned that how come they are still attacking us. Yeah, at but this we hear they keep moment. recruiting. Uh, they, is yeah, it they keep rec thing? yeah, that is the point. Yeah. That's where there is a problem with the intelligence. That is why you need to make sure they don't even have access to that ammunition, they don't even have access to. Uh, whatever they are using to attack the Nigerian people. And the decision as to the military, now you want to hand over to the police. I'm not saying the president has not done something in the last few weeks in order to enhance the police performance here and there because there was an event in Kogi State. There was a personal parade of new cadet officers. But are these police officers were well trained to deal with the situation we have at hand? You see, the, you need to be very consistent when it comes to policy. And what is a policy? Policy is a statement of action. So consistency is very important. You just don't wake up and say, look, I'm going to withdraw. And if you ask some of the security experts, they are still concerned. Look at, if you look at the report over the weekend that all these bandits, they are back in Katsina State, despite all the peace accord, and also at the same time, kidnapping is still going on day in, day out. You see, we still have all sorts of, a lot of challenges. Yeah, although here, the president there. has said that he, he would do this gradually, that he's not Go, just going to be immediate mm. and with, with reports we're getting this morning now the police have uh, thrown in their statement by saying that they are ready to mm. take over anywhere the military leaves out for them yes. so shouldn't we have some level of confidence well, uh, in them because especially remember when uh, I think about two years ago when we we're reporting that about 
26 states, mm -hmm. if not more than that, had the presence of military, military and yeah. all of that. And Nigerians were, how do Agitated we, you know, how do we spread mm. our military lean yes. all over the country? Mm. You know, you see, you have to, we are supposed to trust the police for our police force, according <laughs> to you. We are supposed to believe in them. But at the same time, you have to be very careful of okay. people who are marking their homework. Right. What would the police say? They will say, yes, we are ready, this and that and what have you. But by the time you go for that, maybe the reality is not the case. But I'm not saying we shouldn't use the police force. But the point is this. You see, some of these soldiers have the experience already because they've been there for a number of years. If you want to withdraw them, then let them train the police force how to take over. That is how it is it's going. That's the best way to go. And my major concern is that, you see, this, we can't just wake up and start taking a decision. This needs to be well thought out. And the president, the time is not there. Time is running. In the next two years now, friends will turn to enemies, colleagues will turn to adversary because the Joseph for 2023 will start. And the president has tried as much as possible to nip that in the bud by saying, count me out of thought time. Mm. Mm. But that is fine. It needs to go further and tell people, don't come and visit me. Because in the next two years, you will see <laughs> some people going, one group going the other. Just, just to say hello. Just to say hello to the president. We still want we to There's no harm in saying hello. No, of course. No, no, we no, have no, the no, right to visit I, our I, president. I, I, so. Yes, I I take your point, but mm. take my point. By the time they get there, they are not going to say hello. <laughs> they will say, we still want you to remain. You've done well, this and that. And the president might come out and say, look, oh, I don't want to say any thought time, but it is the people that prevail on me. So we need to wait and see. All right, Femi, I know we have to leave it at yes, this point. Thank, thank you, you so for your contribution. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for mm.